So total, I spent about 10 grand just to slip and fall. Oh my God. <laughs> Trauma. Manila Luzon icon, Gia Gun trash. <laughs> Pheromone, best there ever was. Well, Farah, it was so lovely chatting with you today. But before you leave, I have one more question. Would you ever go back to Drag Race? Why or why not? You know, if you had asked me in 2020, I would have definitely said I'll never go to Drag Race ever again. But, um, you know, I've come to terms with a lot and I, I don't ever like to make ultimatums about like, yes, for sure or no. Now, moving on to All Stars, your All Stars 4 promo look. This was made by Varla Vava Voom in Los Angeles. She's a burlesque costume designer. Um, oh God, I can't remember how much I paid for this. The hair's wigs and grace. <laughs> I, think, I think I paid like $2,500 for this look. Maybe, no, that sounds too high. I don't know, maybe 1500 I don't know. Oh, this one, copied by Ariana Grande herself, your entrance look. This look made my life really difficult for a long time. Um, it was made by Shao Chic, uh, designed by me. Um, I spent, he did it for only the cost of the supplies which still ended up being about $2,500 because we I was bougie and wanted to use all Swarovski and um, it, it was a lot. This was actually supposed to be for DragCon a few months before filming, but he hadn't finished it in time, go figure. So uh, I ended up just recycling it and using it for my entrance look. Also, horrible choice for entrance look. It was so uncomfortable to wear. I was, it, that corset had me sucked in so tight. I couldn't sit because all the crystals was just so uncomfortable. Um, so yeah, I probably spent two, $3,000 on the materials for this look. Your all stars for a variety show look. This was um, a very important look for me. I fully conceptualized the whole thing myself. I wanted um, a full sunset color scheme and uh, it was custom airbrush painted by Varla Vavoom and then stoned with over 30,000 Swarovski and Preciosa crystals in um, I think 15 different colors so that they would great radiate well. Um, so the outfit part of this look was about 3,500 with the gown, the corset, all of that, the gloves, the jewelry, um, and then my life-size highlighter compact that I had made by Keith Booz was about 3,500 as well. So I spent about, oh, and then Sasha Colby, I hired to do my choreography. So total, I spent about 10 grand just to slip and fall. Oh my God. <laughs> Trauma. Your Henny girl group look. Oh, so Marco Marco did this for me. Um, I did not have a huge part in the design for this, which is pretty crazy because I, I had plenty of time for all stars and most of these looks I drew and sketched and designed myself. Um, but for pop star, I was like, I wanted Marco Marco to do something. I wanted Marco Marco to make me a look that he conjured in his mind If for if I was a pop star, just because Marco Marco does so many different pop star looks. Um, there actually was a pair of boots that um, matched, but my calves had been a little swollen and I couldn't get them zipped up. So I had to wear the <laughs> Um, so this, I think I, I think he charged me like 800 for this. I don't, I can't remember. Your eloquence after dark look. I feel like this look was really underrated. Um, August Getty designed and made this. This was, um, from his collection. He let me come over to the atelier and pick something out. 
Uh, so I picked this dress because I just thought it was so stunning. Um, so it, besides the wig, the earrings, and the boa, I, that, those were the only things I paid for. So wig was probably 200. The boa was a 24 ply ostrich boa from South Africa. It was, I got a huge steal on it. It was $600. For a 24 ply boa, that's a pretty good deal. Um, and then the earrings were fierce drag jewels. Your unaired boots the house down look. Oh, um, uh, the designer Juan Chavez, who um, helped make this look come to life, I just found out passed away a couple of weeks ago. So this look is really special now. Um, the jacket was pre-made and pre, it was off the rack from Hazmat Designs and it was a $1,500 jacket that I had bought just for fun after season nine. It wasn't for all stars, um, but the boots were the hardest part to make because they were a pair of leather chaps and we had to hand stitch um, really heavy rhinestone fabric onto them and Juan Chavez made it happen. I can't for the life of me think of what I spent on that, but he was always very reasonably priced, so. Your unaired angelic white look. <laughs> this look almost gave me a stroke. Um, it was supposed to be all white, and when I opened the box the day before going to All Stars, it was silver, and I was extremely triggered. Um, but then I started to kind of like it because I was like, oh, well, everyone will just be wearing all white and mine will have white, but then also be a little different. Uh, this was expensive. I think I spent $1,800 on this total. Your all stars for re-entrance look. This is another look that really, really stressed me out. Um, <laughs> I never posted it because... I had a really big fight with the designer that made this because um, I, it was one of the first looks that I had thought of and conceptualized and I wanted to get it commissioned right away. And the designer put it off until three days before and rushed this dress. And it was really poorly made. Um, there was Hobby Lobby stones on it, which I really had a big meltdown over. There was a pair of gloves that matched with it that did not fit. And um, she tried to charge me like $2,500, $3,000 for this gown. And I ended up settling with her for $1,500. So. Your Lala Perusa look. Lala Perusa look, bang London. I was so excited to get to have something um, made by him. I conceptualized and drew this out and uh, Bang credits me as as a designer for this, which is really sweet. Um, I think it was six hundred dollars. Uh, and since then, um, AliExpress has mass produced their version of this, and it is seen all over the place now. So, Trendsetter. your unaired plastic fantastic look. All right, so this is the Jane Doe latex with a wigs and grace wig. Um, the look included a rhinestone blow dryer that didn't make it into the photo shoot and half of my face was gonna be melted. The same side of my face as you see the melted pattern on the dress, but I we didn't have any time to shoot our All-Stars looks because All-Stars came out like less than two months after we filmed it. So I had to shoot like five or six looks in one day. So I did not have time to make half my face melt for this photo shoot. And a lot of people ended up calling this look basic because you really don't get to see the full vision. I, um, which I kind of regret. Part of me wishes I just made a whole day to shoot this, but uh, all in all, it was a pretty relatively inexpensive look. The rhinestone blow dryer I had made on Etsy and I still have it to this day and I use it in my personal life. And it was like $200. The hat suit was probably around three or four or five hundred, somewhere in that ballpark. Wig two fifty. So your unaired clown couture look. I'm sorry, this is like one of the best looks that ever has been on Drag Race. I'm just gonna. Say <laughs> um, this was a look that a lot of imagination and thought went into. Um, I actually shopped around with several different designers before having uh, Casey do this. Casey 
I ended up seeming to understand my vision the most. And um, I had such a good working relationship with him. Sean Magby did make the Jack in the Box on the um, head. The Jack in the Box was a progressive auto insurance one that we found on eBay. And we pulled out flow and put in a Barbie and dyed its hair pink and painted it to look like me and then decorated the Jack in the Box box and put it on a headset on a headdress with the wig and I probably spent about $1,500 on this. Your unaired best Judy realness look. All right, y'all, this, these were another concept of mine and Sean Magby made these. But the beautiful thing about these two dresses is that the boobs, the little things have confetti poppers in them. And there was two hidden strings on each side of the bra cut cutlets. And on the runway, we were going to pull the strings and the confetti was going to blow out of our boobs. Um, I should have made video content of them after the fact, but I kind of didn't want to ruin the confetti poppers just in case I did something live in a club someday. And um, they were actually really hard to get in there. So yeah, these were really cheap to make. Me and Sean made these like, God, probably both of them for $200 because we just cheap fabric feathers done. Your unaired sex and the kitty girl look. I didn't spend a damn thing on this look. This is another look that was graciously lent to me by my friend, August Getty. Um, thank God, because I, I mean, I really wish I could have worn this. It's so pussy, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's so pussy. When we were shooting this, I was whipping my hair around and that's why my hair looks like that. But um, yeah, very cute. Your unaired kitty girl could uh we were inspired by the cheshire cat jane doe lake tex killed this um inflatable tail we probably spent this was probably a six or seven hundred dollar cat suit your unaired super queen look this is another underrated look of mine i should probably wear it somewhere so people can see how it really looks in person it's so well made. Um, it is fully uh, covered in Swarovski and Preciosa crystals. Um, God, how much did I spend on this? Probably like two and a half grand on this. Maybe 2000, I would say 2000. So let's play a game. I'm going to say the names of several queens from your original season, and I want you to say one word that describes their style. Uh, Sasha Bloor, high art, uh, peppermint. Um, just stunning. Uh, Shea Coulee is, um, God, this is actually really hard. Just a, one word. Shea Coulee, revolutionary. <laughs> Trinity the Tuck, old. Um, <laughs> Alexis Michelle, uh, Broadway. Nina Bonina Brown, avant-garde. Valentina, uh, Caliente. Somebody kick me off of here. <laughs> um, Cynthia Lee Fontaine. Congenial. Cuckoo. Oh. Eureka O'Hara, large. <laughs> Urban life. Um, Charlie Hyde. Polished, ultimate polished. Kamora Black, sexy ho. James Mansfield, a bimbo core. Okay, Monet Exchange, uh, voice for radio. <laughs> Mo Hart, um, wigless. <laughs> Naomi Smalls, uh, model. Latrice Royale. Uh, gosh, there's so many things I love about Latrice Royale. What word should I use? I don't know. This is, y'all, I don't have a lot of brain cells left. This is really hard. Latrice Royale, amazing. Manila Luzon, icon. Gia Gunn, trash. 
pheromone best there ever was jasmine masters um hysterical amazing personality i quote her every day and we paul is just legend well farah it was so lovely chatting with you today but before you leave i have one more question would you ever go back to try grace why or why not you know, if you had asked me in 2020, I would have definitely said I'll never go to Drag Race ever again. But, um, you know, I've come to terms with a lot and I, I don't ever like to make ultimatums about like, yes, for sure or no. I like to keep my world kind of open and let opportunities come to me as the universe wants them to. Um, and, you know, now they do provide the girls with therapy and they provide a little extra help with the budget. So um, I guess never say never. I, probably not anytime soon. I'm not super in my drag obsessed air. Like, I don't feel like I'm super in, like into doing drag right now. Like, I obviously, like, it's my job, but like, I'm like if someone told me to put together 36 looks right now, I'd be like, you've got to be out of your mind. Like I, I don't, the inner, the creative juices are not in that place right now, but um, I am so excited for all of the season nine girls that are continuously uh, getting on all stars and killing it. I am just so in love with all the season nine girls. And I, I I'm so excited for every single one of them to get a chance. And I'm so excited to see uh, James Mansfield and Alexis Michelle sign shine on all stars eight. Thank you guys so much for having me. This was so much fun. Thank you, Farrah. It was so nice talking to you. Likewise, I'm gonna message you on Twitter. You're are you doing are you doing DragCon? No. Aw. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you in WeHo. I will probably walk around DragCon and grab some free stuff, but come to my booth, I'll give you a fan. Period. <laughs> see you later, Fairmo. Thank Bye, you. Bye, so Farrah. Love you. Bye, y'all. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date with our weekly content. And don't forget to hit the like button and leave us a comment below to let us know who you want to see next. And if you want early or exclusive content, make sure to support us here. Now click here to see the next part of our interview.